this zombie strat is impossible to attack against. In today's video, I'll be showing you five great strategies for coastline for your ranked games. Let's get into it. For the first strat, let's go over the Azami strat that I just showed you on screen. Now, the first Azami barricade you want to put on the side of this wall right here, exactly in the middle. The reason you do this is so if anybody tries to repel on this window as an attacker, they can't actually see you whenever you're on the rotate, which is really, really powerful. I kill a lot of people from that angle, so the ability to completely counter it is very, very nice. And no, they can't melee this from outside the window. That one I actually did make up myself, along with the next one that I'm going to show you, which is the one that you put right at the tip of this triangle, just like that. I posted these zombie barricades like a year or two ago when a zombie first came out on TikTok and the videos blew up. So I actually did make that one and this one here, but the last three are pretty known throughout the community and that I didn't make these ones up. The first of which being the one that you put on the pink bar right here. That one does the same thing that the first Azami Barricade does, where it essentially protects the rotate here from anybody inside of Aqua instead, which is pretty powerful for you. But also, if you are rotating and you want to contest Aqua, you're able to play off of this barricade just like this, and you can get a lot of free kills off of it. It's a really, really good barricade. Now, we know how commonly they'll have the rotate here, a reinforcement here, along with head holes, all along that wall there. That's pretty common. The only issue with this here, however, is if you have somebody in Aqua as an attacker, they now have a deep angle onto anybody rotating into Hookah from the Cool Vibes Rotate. To mitigate this, you can easily put an Azami Barricade on the bomb chassis right here. Now, you may be thinking this is bad because it gives them cover to plant behind the bomb chassis, but that's not really that big of an issue, due to the fact that you're easily able to rotate behind this Azami Barricade here and deny it if you need to. But it's kind of a double-edged sword for the reasons that I highlighted earlier, so if you don't want to, you can just get rid of it. And then finally, as a zombie, you want some barbed wire for the cool vibe stairs. And you want barbed wire for the 90 hall in case they try to go from the VIP door or from 90 to rush anybody playing inside of base. Now, as a zombie, you're primarily going to be playing inside of hookah due to the fact that you need to be able to throw that is on me and that is on me from the rotate here. And due to the fact that all of these Azami Barricades are protecting this Rotate, so you kind of want to be playing off of it to get usefulness out of it. You can also quick peek this Barricade just like this to kill anybody on the window, or if you want to, you can save your last and final Azami Barricade and put it right here on the ledge of this table to make sure that nobody on the doorway can shoot you while you're playing behind the bar. It's overall a great strategy, and it's super easy to do, and it's super easy to be good at when you do do it. Now, let's say that you want an attacking strat instead. Well, as Flores, there's a strat that you can do super easily. What you want to do initially is go onto the roof right above Hookah if you're attacking Hookah. Then you're going to throw a drone into this AC vent right here. The reason you drone this initially is to make sure that they don't have a Mute Jammer or a Mozzie Pest that can get rid of your Flores drones. Once you've droned this and you've made sure that there isn't one of those two things here, or you've droned it from maybe Bottom Sunrise instead, which I actually recommend more, then get on your Flores drone. Once you get on your Flores drone, you're going to drive it through the exact same AC vent just like this. You're going to drop it down, and you're immediately going to destroy the shield that is typically right here. You can do this within the first 30 seconds of the round, and as you can see by that explosion, it will get any player or deployable shield that typically sits on vase, allowing you to have a lot better of an angle when you're playing on the hookah balcony. Due to the fact that a lot of people don't even know that this AC vent exists, or they won't expect a Flores drone coming from it, you will 9 times out of 10 get this shield for absolutely free. If, however, they do have utility blocking you from being able to do that, you can easily just get a Flores drone right here on the staircase, and you can just send it in just like this, get off the Flores drone, and it will drive ahead straight like that until it runs into something and it will explode. I don't recommend this method because it makes it a lot easier to shoot due to the fact that it will only go into its explosive mode, as you can see, after a few seconds. So I actually recommend getting on it. And if you want to get on it, the safest path that you can take as Flores is to immediately jump and hit a sharp left so they can't shoot it, go all the way around the couch, hug this wall, and then immediately jump and blow it up. This will make it to where nobody will be able to shoot it due to the fact that the person behind this bar, as you can see right here, isn't able to shoot it until it comes in the door, but they, you know, they won't have time to react to that. And then the person in vase can't even see it unless it's by the door, but again, they won't have time to react to that. So either way, you will be able to get the shield for absolutely free which again is the primary purpose of the strat. Now, let's say that they have a zombies over here like I just showed you, or maybe they have a player behind the bar. Well, if you rappel back up to the roof, as you can see, there's another AC vent right here, just like the one that we talked about earlier. You can easily send a Flores drone down the AC vent, and as you can see, that vent is right above where players love to play. So what you can do is have a teammate playing on top of the door, and then you can flash grenade through there, send a Flores drone through there, and then you putting a Flores drone through this will force them, as you can see, to get out of there, 
and then your player right here can easily shoot them as they're running away. So either way, they're going to die, and you can get a free kill doing this. You can also, again, go through the vent all the way to these zombies over here, which is a great strategy as well. But playing Flores and using the two vents like I just showed you is a great strategy to get any deployable utility, especially if you know that they are bringing some for the hookah bomb site. Now, if you want the hookah bomb site, it's time to move down to Kitchen where this Aruni get strategy will be your best friend for winning any bomb site down here. As Aruni, you want to start out by helping your team with the site setup due to the fact that as you can see, you have a bionic arm that can easily make holes. Now, as you can see with Aruni, I've made the typical feet holes, rotates, and other feet holes here. But there's one thing that you want to do as Aruni, hole-wise, that you might not know you should do, and that's making a rotate on the right side of the triple wall. Now the purpose of this rotate I'll go over later, but just know that you need it for right now. Due to the fact that attackers can also utilize this rotate if they, god forbid, get control of the reception desk, then you can put in a runing gate on it as well. This will make it to where you can freely use the rotate as you please, but they can't unless they burn some sort of utility which will make noise, so you'll be aware that it's happening. Now you can bring barbed wire or a bulletproof camera, but personally I like the BP for this site. There's two options. You can either reinforce this wall and put the BP on the reinforced wall. This, of course, will be facing anybody going into surface, allowing you to get drones from the service door or from bathroom, which is pretty good. Or you can come into kitchen and you can pop up on top of the counter here and put it right here. If you get on this camera, it allows you to see any drones coming through that drone hole, and it allows you to see any drones coming in through the feet holes or the door here. Overall, either or works. Now, in terms of your Aruni gates, these are pretty optional, but I definitely like to have one on the bathroom door, just because this is very common for attackers to abuse because a lot of people forget to hold the bathroom. And then I like to have one on the kitchen window. Now, the reason that I put one on the kitchen window is because a lot of times attackers will rush or they'll play Ying, and then they'll just hop in this window for absolutely free, uncontested, and get free kills in a really fast paced meta. So putting in a runing it here allows you to at least get some sort of audio call that they're about to do this so that you can hold the angle and get free kills and not make it so easy for them to just hop in. So I love putting in a runing it here. You can put it on this door right here to sunrise as well, either or works. This personally though is just my favorite. So now we've gone over all of this site setup and I want to explain one thing. Why did I put two reinforcements here and a rotate here? Well, the reason that you put a rotate here if you haven't played in high elo or watched a lot of pro league is because you typically want a deployable shield right here to face the reception double door. The entire purpose of having a rotate is so that the person behind the shield can rotate back to site because you want to be holding reception for as long as possible. Otherwise, they'll take bathroom control, they'll get the triple wall control, they'll get hallway control for absolutely free, and it makes it to where roamers can't get back to site and people on site are completely stuck. So holding control of reception is a pretty underrated tip that I think you should be doing if you have a duo. If you don't have a duo though that has a shield that you can rely on, then just play behind the desk, play behind the wall, or maybe just don't put a rotate there at all and save your Rooney gate for something else. As a Rooney, you can abuse angles that they might not know about with your DMR due to the fact that you're a 3 armor with a 1.5 time scope. Angles like this one on the bomb chassis that allow you to see the service door. The retake angle here with the feet holes that deny the common plant in the corner there. Or maybe you can surprise them by going through this rotate and shooting people in the hallway due to the fact that they'll probably be expecting you to come through the bathroom door instead. I got a lot of kills with this specifically. You're even able to sit in courtyard and shoot anybody coming in from the kitchen door if you're trying to contest them and you don't win the gunfight. So overall with a Rooney, just hold angles, do this site setup, and you should win a lot of kitchen defenses as long as your teammates don't reinforce this for you. But that's enough for defense. Let's do this attacking Osa strategy for Hookah in case you don't like playing Flores. Given that Osa has frag grenades now, you should definitely try this stride out now that she can do this. Firstly, you want to spawn poolside, then you want to run all the way up to the hookah stairs and use your osha shield to destroy the barricade just like this. Now, you don't necessarily need to deploy your shield on the doorway, you just want to use it to break the barricade, because somebody in the corner of hookah can easily knife your shield and now it's just gone to waste. Instead, you want to back up with your osha shield until the people on the window can see you, which is about here. You don't want them to be able to see you, so I'd put my Osha shield about right here. Now people are able to play on the staircase behind your Osha shield, or even they're able to repel on this wall here and do the exact same thing. But at least this way, they don't have to worry about the window as much because they can just duck. It's a pretty nice Osha shield. But like I said, your teammates are going to use this, not you. This is specifically for your teammates. So what you're going to do is place that shield down and immediately go over here. Once you're here, repel up to the side of the building, just like this. Then 
upside down repel. Pull out your shield and deploy your Osa shield upside down on the hookah window. Now wait, before you fully deploy it, I want you to fake deploy it because a lot of people will play Azami for this site and they'll have impacts for your Osa shield. You want to bait this out mid deploy. You can deploy just like that, fake deploy it, deploy it just like that, fake deploy it, bait out the impacts. Once you've done this, then put it on. Now, you're going to normal repel just like this. Go down and you have a nice pixel angle just like this that can see anybody rotating into hookah, anybody on the hookah bar, or anybody on the vase door, or anybody for that matter trying to kill you from the rotate on the cool vibes. Overall, a great pixel angle and you can really hang out on this window the entire round. Pressure from this window makes defenders have to play a lot differently and a lot more passive, so you just being here even if you don't get kills will help your team out a lot. Make sure you don't have Diffuser because your teammate playing behind that shield is going to come in and plant right here if they have a brain, and you can just sit back and watch it from afar. It's a pretty good strategy for passive players with maybe not the best aim. Now finally for my advanced players, I want to go over a castle strat for penthouse and theater for anybody that may have won the first two sites on defense. First of all, I want to clear up some misconceptions about this site. First of all for the site, VIP control is crucial. So you want these two walls reinforced as well as a rotate on the left side of this wall. That way you can easily rotate in between sites and still maintain VIP control, because if you don't, they can easily get an angle from the wall all the way into the site, and you don't want that to happen. If you put a reinforcement and head holes next to this rotate, it allows people in VIP to contest the window, or people in penthouse to contest people in VIP, and vice versa. It's a great strategy. Now, if you don't accidentally shotgun out the dresser like I did, the dresser becomes a great point of contact to use to hide from the double window whenever you're rotating, which is why I recommend you put it on the right side and not the left side like that. Another misconception about this site is that you need these walls here reinforced. You actually don't. You want to rotate on this wall here. Now, this rotate allows people inside of theater to be able to contest the 90 hallway, which is typically dominated by attackers. But if you have a deployable shield here, or maybe you're just aggressive, you can easily take control of this power position away from the attackers. Given that you also have a teammate playing in luggage for the white stairs walk up, it's very easy for you to do this. Finally, what you want is a reinforcement here, which you may think is basic, but a lot of people will reinforce next to it. That's not what you want. Instead, you want head holes next to this reinforcement. Because if you don't do that, people can get on the VIP window and easily shoot you from the rotate using head holes here that they could make shift themselves. So this reinforcement is very powerful. Not only because of that, but because you can peek off of it and contest the wall if they open it. This reinforcement as well allows people to play off of this reinforcement and not have to worry about the 90 hall. They can easily still use the head holes if they want to for the door right there. But that won't really be an issue for you, because your first castle barricade is actually going to go on this double door. If you combo that up with a rotate into hookah somewhere like this, it makes attackers think to funnel into hookah instead of wasting utility and time destroying this castle barricade, which is great for you. Because now, as a defender, you can easily hold long angles onto the hookah door and not necessarily have to worry about that door. If you pair this up with holes just like this, now you as the 90 player or as the person behind this reinforcement can easily watch people using the rotate that you baited them with. You're also able to put a bulletproof camera just like this. This, for obvious reasons, allows you to destroy any drones coming from anywhere on this side of the map or on the left side of the map for that matter as well. Your other castle barricade will go on the double window just like this for obvious reasons. It just makes them have to waste a little bit more utility to take control of this big window. Now you also want feet holds all along the bathroom wall, just like that. Once you've done that, you're going to castle off the door just like this. This makes it to where if you're sitting in VIP or in Hall of Fame, you can easily shoot anybody that drops in the closet. And because you castled off their doorway, they can't even escape. They're just stuck there and they're probably going to die. It also makes it to where you can rotate in this hallway without having to worry about the double window that they can use through this doorway because it's castled off. You also want to make sure that the wall next to your rotate is reinforced. This is so that when you're rotating, you don't have to worry about somebody trying to shoot you through the wall when they're on this doorway here. Your final castle barricade is pretty optional. I like to put it on the window just like this. This is because if you don't, they can easily open up this wall here, and now they have a long angle into VIP and into this site, but with this castle here, they don't get that. Like I said, it's a pretty advanced strat, and you really want to make sure that you have good teammates that know how to set it up with you for you to be able to do anything with it at all. But if you can do all of that, then this strat will win you every single round that you go to penthouse because enemies don't have the brain to counter it. But that's pretty much it for today's video. Check out this next video. My name's Alka, and I'll see y'all in the next one. Later.